part of the reason why I dropped out of the business in 2014 was that I felt like I'd kind of done the things that I wanted to do in the business. Oh, there's, there might be more to find out about these people because that's what happens in life, isn't it? One stage of life comes to a conclusion and life doesn't stop turning. It's just what's going to happen next. We're going to do this together every step of the way. Just tell me what I've got to do. This is a really interesting show in that it's obviously a very timely story and one of those what if scenarios. Having seen the entire series, it's it's very different than what I was expecting having you know seen the novel. So for both of you getting involved and uh, Joanne, we can start with you. What was it that drew you to this project? You know, it's everything you've mentioned really and, and more, it was uh, when I read this script, I just thought, wow, it's you know, incredibly action-packed, it's going to be incredibly entertaining, edge of your seat. You know, there's elements of a Bond film, I feel, that, that Denny and the team, Matthew and the team have pulled off. You know, that, that starts as a piece of great entertainment. It also has this, this much deeper story running through it, which is a sort of warning, if you like, or a, or a highlight of, of, you know, the world issues that we're all facing today. And then, you know, it also has the the everyday issues, the humanity and the love that this family have for each other and how they're fighting to try and regain each other and try and get back to each other. And that ultimately gives you the, the heart of the story that really makes you care. Um, so it just, it, it sort of ticked all the boxes really for, for what I think makes a great story. And, and Matthew, for you, this is kind of being billed, they're calling it Matthew Fox's return to television after so many years. And I do have to put a preface, I have an actual action figure of you that I put away for today's call. We were very much a Lost household, actually. All the kids are named after various characters from Lost. Oh, very what good. Was it, what was it uh, that drew you back to doing another series? As Joe mentioned, I, I think, you know, the, the story itself, on a, on, a, on a macro and on a personal scale, I thought was really interesting. And um, I think it's timeliness and the backdrop in which the story is set uh, against this, this, this oil crisis and, um, and this core nucleus of a family at, at the core of it that is, that is just be beautiful and like they really love each other and they're a, a good family there are there are issues within the family there's issues within the marriage it's and then of course we've got sam's condition and his you know deteriorating eyesight and but at the core this is a, a nucleus that's very it's beautiful and to have it sort of fractured and separated uh physically and logistically across continents and to have that be the thrust for uh, our, us caring about the core the characters at the core of it and trying them trying to get back together again and to be reunited and to bring what they've learned uh back into the family uh, these were all elements that i was um i was drawn to and and then on a more personal sort of logistics level, part of the reason why I dropped out of the business in 2014 was that I felt like I'd kind of done the things that I wanted to do in the business. And I have I had kind of a unwritten bucket list in my mind of things that I wanted to try to accomplish. But the one thing left on that list is that I had never executive produced anything. I'd never been uh, involved in a story with and have be able to maybe put my fingerprint or some input or um, you know some con contribution to the story that was beyond just the character that I was that I was portraying and I really I really wanted that um, I love stories I love them and I, and and so to be involved on another level and, and and to be able to like look at cuts and give notes on scripts and to be able to be involved in the mu I mean like music uh, I'm just kind of fascinated by the the art of storytelling and filmmaking and all the challenges in it. So I wanted to learn more about that and be more involved. And this was going to give me the opportunity to do that. It's also going to give me the opportunity to work with um, my manager, Bill Choi, that we, the only manager I've ever had in this business, a very, very good friend. And we had been talking for a while about how we wanted to have that, to be able to collaborate on something creatively. And uh, so we are both executive producers on the project and we had an amazing time. We learned a lot. Filmmaking is just a never ending sequence of problem solving. It really is. It's just it's just every every day is trying to find ways to do something that seems impossible to do. The worst case is unfolding. The sophisticated attacks. 
everything will be impacted. Food, medicine, electricity. Leading to mass panic, then violence. First thing I saw about this show was in your notes, you mentioned being inspired by Children of Men for telling kind of a story that could be just around the corner. And yet this story is very different than the source material in where it kind of goes. At least in, in what we see on screen here, it's not like a post-apocalyptic, but it's kind of a pre-apocalyptic leading right to that. Is that what really drew you to telling this story? Yes, you know, I didn't want to tell a, a, a post-pandemic COVID story. I didn't want anybody running around in masks. I think we're all very weary of that. But, we, but it was very important that it feel like this could happen tomorrow because we know how quickly things fall apart. And it was very important that it feel authentic and it also was tricky because it had to have a progression. You know, it had to be, okay, well, we, 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 once, the, once we're, on, we're on rolling power outages, okay, and hospitals are being evacuated, what's the next logical step? Okay, pretty soon cars are out of gas or their lines, you know. We had to think of this authentically in terms of an event and resources and, and also wanted that to match the psychology of where we were at that point in the story. Um, my production designer, Martin Dashkar in uh, Prague, did a very brilliant document, which was so helpful to my cinematographer, Patrick Maguia, and myself, so that we always knew, like, well, really, where are we right now? Um, what, 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 what is really happening? And that it always felt like something that, that absolutely could happen tomorrow. Mm -hmm. This was very important to us. Something's wrong with the oil, Andy. System shut down. Equipment failure. They've never seen anything like it. <laughs> and logistically, this story is gigantic. It crosses countries and continents. It's a global story. But with your two characters, you're together in the beginning, you're together in the end, but you're separated by distance and everything through the bulk of the story. How do the two of you really kind of connect your characters with so much time apart on this series? Uh, well, Matthew and Denny Gordon, our brilliant director, and I did sort of a lot of work in rehearsal on that because we were all very aware of the fact that, you know, for, for a lot of the story, um, Eleanor and Andy are separated in, you know, physicality. So, um, you know, it was really important that we as actors knew what their history was and you know, how they might have met, where they've gone wrong, how the last few years have been dealing with a child with really serious health issues, how that's drawn, drawn the wedge between them. Ellen has given up her career to be at home with Sam. Andy's then taken over the, the sole breadwinner role, but is that the reason he's working all the time or is he buried in his head in the sand? And all of, you know, sort of like threaded through all these um, details for them, which, which is really important because, um, you know, it's often, or nearly always what you're not saying that tells the story um so all that has to be going on in your head or you know in your heart or whatever to really get across the emotions of, what, of what's happening between them yeah I, I think that that was invaluable work that we did um i just feel like you know and and hopefully that's that's there you you, you do that work and then you hope that it's 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 in the subtext it's in the unspoken things and and i think it was important for the audience to get a sense right from the beginning that yes, there's there's something going on between Andy and Elena, and and there's, but also at the same time, it's a fine line because you want them to be rooting for this couple to to survive and to through the through the crisis and through the 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 adventure that they're about to go on, uh, that they're going to come back together again in a better place. And um, so we did the work, and hopefully it worked out. I think it definitely does come across that way because you are rooting for the characters as you watch it, and it's never. You know, there's the tension throughout that hopefully they get back to each other when they get back. And that's really kind of just where the story kind of picks up and begins, like when they finally get back together. And then it's a race to the finish. Was this something that both of you really expected that to be like a limited series? Was that one of the reasons for signing on? It's nice to be able to, you know, it's lovely to, to have five hours to tell a story. What I also love is having a, an ending that you feel very satisfied with but you can also see oh there's there might be more to find out about these people because that's what happens in life isn't it one stage of life comes to a conclusion and life doesn't stop turning it's just what's going to happen next so yeah it, there's, a, there's a nice ambiguity about it i think yeah i think it's it's it strikes that balance uh, just about right 
And, you know, I think that's one of just being able to tell a story in the, the arc of this story in five episodes, five chapters is, is something that, I mean, just in the time that I was away from the business, that's all changed, you know? Right. I mean, honestly, um, it's really just been in the, past, in the past seven or eight years that, that storytellers and premises, like a premise that only t requires five chapters could be told. I mean, that used to either have to be a two hour film or it had to be um, a six hour, a six years of television show, which I did two of them. I mean, and so I wasn't really, I was definitely not interested in getting back into a series that was going to be, a, you know, six years. Um, and the business has changed in a, in a way with streaming that now I can make a commitment to get involved in something where the story arc is finished in five chapters just the right amount of chapters to tell the story, no more, no less. And I think that that's why there's so much great stuff going on right now. I mean, there's so many cool series. Like if you look at like a series like Blackbird or, you know, those kind of premises, like that just, that story would not have been tellable, uh, you know, seven or eight years ago, really. I mean, the way the business was structured, the way the economics of the business was structured. So that's good news for, for, for this kind of storytelling and for, for the audience, I think. Definitely. Well, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Can't wait for people to check it out. You're both awesome in the show. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you for your time. I've just received intel that the British power grid is failing. There are rolling outages in France, Spain, Germany. Something's wrong with the oil, Andy. System shut down, equipment failure. They've never seen anything like it. I need to do a full analysis. Spectroscopy, energy density, everything. I'll get to the bottom of it. Your son is having surgery. And I will be there. I need to do this. I don't want you to leave. I'll be back. I promise. Planes are crashing and no one can see why. The worst case is unfolding. They're sophisticated attacks. Everything will be impacted. Food, medicine, electricity. Leading to mass panic, then violence. You think this is deliberate? Chaos knows is the gravest danger. Let's go, let's go! Your expertise makes you a target. You're not telling me something. There is a lot at stake here. I need you focused. I don't know where my wife and kids are. your responsibility to help other people see too. We're going to do this together every step of the way. Just tell me what I've got to do.